All right, everyone. Well, we're going to go ahead and jump into the recap today. If you missed my morning update this morning, I sat down to a stock already up 700%. Big move. And the move was really after hours yesterday, pre-market this morning. And by 5 a.m. it had peaked and was starting to sell off. And I was like, well, you know, what can I do? I kind of missed the move. Now, I did end up trading it. And it's actually the stock I made the most on today, which is great. And I'll break down how I traded it. But something interesting happened with this stock today. It actually got halted more than 40 times as the day went on. And a lot of traders didn't understand this. They didn't understand why it was halting so frequently, why some of the halts were five minutes, some were 10 minutes. It just was very challenging for a lot of traders. Now, if we look at the price action here on this stock, you could see um, ASNS uh, currently up, I guess, a little over 500%. And this is the chart. So you can see it made the bulk of the move after hours. And then pre-market, it surged up peaking it must have been 900%, but then pulling back here down. And when I sat down around 637 to start looking at scanners, you know, I kind of was like, well, I've already missed the move. So I, I was, however, excited because when you see something up 600, 700%, even if you don't end up trading that stock, it's just a great signal of strength in the market. Like this is the time to focus. Okay. So I sat down and um, I, I found that you know, it was a little choppy early pre-market. So I'm going to switch to the one minute chart and back this up a little bit. Um, so we had a couple of different um, opportunities on this, um, which I traded. So my first trade on it was actually this dip right here. So it squeezed up a little after 8 a.m. And, it, you know, really nice move. Break of view app pops up, but I didn't want to chase that. I said, I'm going to wait for the first pullback. So when I'm talking about first pullback, what I'm looking for is green candle, green candle, first red candle, second red candle. And basically at this point, I'm looking for the first candle to go green, right? That's the standard bull flag pattern, pullback pattern. In this case, it pulls back one candle, two candle, three candle, and then it kind of bounced right off that nine moving average. So I bought the dip off the nine moving average at about 420. It bounces up to 435, which was decent. And so I got a quick little trade on that. It pulls back again, bounces off of 383, comes back up, and then right here squeezes up to a high of 448. Ends up pulling back. It wasn't able to break through the half dollar there. Tried again here, broke the half dollar, dropped back down. And then it started to pull back as we got closer to the open. Now, there was something about this stock that I knew was going to be a problem. Okay, yesterday, the close was below 75 cents. In fact, the close was at 49 cents. Why is that relevant? Well, let's go ahead and look at this um, page here on my website. So under trading terms guide, um, we've got circuit breaker halts. So this is an article that I wrote about how circuit breaker halts work. And what you'll notice is that stocks below 75 cents right here will halt every 15 cents. So a stock where the previous close is less than 75 cents will halt every 15 cents. And those halt levels begin at 9.30 a.m. and continue until 3.35 p.m. At 3.35 p.m., the halt bands double. So we go from 15 cents to 30 cents. And that did happen today at uh, 3.35 as we went into the close. The halt bands doubled to 30 cents. But because the halt bands were so tight, the problem with this is that all of a sudden, if it drops, it goes up or down, it's almost immediately getting halted. Now, to help you better understand the way these halts work, um, I'm just going to move this out of the way here. Some people think they're very static, but they're actually somewhat dynamic. So if the price is at $5 right here, then the halt up would be 550, up 10%. The halt down would be 450 if it goes down 10%. So if it goes to 450 and it stays basically pinned at this price, which means that there's a seller on the ask, right? We've got the bid and we've got the ask. So if we have a seller on the ask holding it at 450, it will halt. The seller has to sit there for at least 15 seconds in order for the stock to halt. Now, if it just flashes down to 450 and the ask goes to 475, it bounces back up, then we would call that a false halt. It bounces back up, no halt. But if it stays at 450 for 15 seconds, the stock is going to halt for a period of at least five minutes. 
Five minutes is the minimum period for a circuit breaker volatility trading pause. All right. Now, the thing is, the stock literally couldn't drop from five all the way to four in one candle because the circuit breaker halt sets this as the lowest the price can go. So the price could drop to 450. But while the stock is halted, people can prepare sell orders. And if people want to sell, they could put a sell order out at 425 or $4. And if there aren't enough buy orders to match it, then the resumption from a 450 halt could be down at four or 425 or, or higher or lower, depending on the imbalance between the buyers and the sellers that occurs during the five minute halt time. So the only thing that's also worth noting is that this would be if the average price over the last five minutes was $5. If the average price over, let's say over the last five minutes, that the price has been squeezing up. Okay, so it's been squeezing up like this, you know, more or less, something like that. Then let's just say it went from 475 to, or let's just use these numbers. Let's say it went from 450 to $5. And let's say the average price over these last five minutes is 475. Then it's actually plus 10% from the average price over the last five minutes which puts the halt level up here at, you know, approximately five, you know, 20, 23 or 22, something like that, 22.5, approximately, right? And so this average price is being recalculated approximately every 30 seconds. So as the stock continues to move, these halt bands are constantly moving around the price. Whatever is the average price over the last five minutes that's 10% above and below. Now it's 10% above and below for stocks that are priced above $3. Okay, so if I pull this back down here, for stocks priced above $3, the halt bands are uh, 10%. So in other words, if the stock's at $5, 550. If the stock's at $10, then the halt level's at 11, right? It's 10%. If the stock is priced between 75 cents and $3, the halts are every 20%. So lower price stocks tend to have more volatility, so they give them a, a greater band, volatility band. So it's every 20% that the stock would halt. But stocks under 75 cents will halt either every 15 cents or 75 cents. But when it gets up to, sorry, 15 cents or 75%, but once it gets up to three, four, five dollars a share, it's not going up 75% in five minutes. It's going up 15 cents. And so unfortunately, what that means is that a stock like this is essentially going to halt, you know, if it goes up approximately 15 cents. So now let's go back to the open. Now, because I knew this, I knew that it was basically going to be impossible to trade once the market opened. All right, so the market opens right here and the opening price is 371 and then we drop to 352 and we halt down. All right, so now we're halted down for five minutes. So halts are five minutes standard. Then it resumes right here and it halts up. It only goes up like 15 cents. I mean, literally, it goes from a low of 303 up to, well, let's see. So the average price, it goes up to about, let's see, the low was... 303, the open was 310, and it halted up at 325. So it halts up. And then it resumes lower and halts down. Goes down again, halts back up. And, and this continues all day long. And these are extremely difficult to trade because all of a sudden, you can be getting in, you could think that the pattern looks good, whatever, you get in, and then one person throws a market order out for 50,000 shares, the stock drops five cents. Another person puts out a couple more sellers, it's down eight cents. Next thing you know, people are like, oh God, it's gonna halt. They start panicking and now it's halted and you can't get out your stock. <laughs> and it happens that fast. So you can get trapped and you get trapped both long and short. It's just the nature of these halting as frequently as they do. Personally, I think that these halt thresholds should be updated because they don't really control volatility. In fact, they make it more difficult to move in and out of stocks, which reduces liquidity, which creates, I would say, more risk. So what's really interesting here, I, I think, this is, you know, 
not something I would bring up at like a cocktail party. But what I think is really interesting is that you could have a stock um, just like this one today. So ASNS um, priced it, you know, $5, was halting every 15 cents, right? So it goes up to 515 at halts, it goes down to 485 at halts. But you have another stock, and that's because it, its previous close was less than 75 cents. But you have another stock that was at a dollar yesterday. It also squeezes up to $5, but because it was between the price of 75 cents and $3, its halt levels are every 20%. This one's every 15 cents, this is every 20%. So now this can go all the way to $6 before it halts or all the way down to, well, 10%. Yeah. I mean, I guess technically, even though that'd be a 25% drop, I don't know. It's the average price. So I guess technically. So, you know, I mean, these are heat in any case, you get the idea that 515 halt up or 485 halt down, that's too tight. But then this is almost kind of too big. So, you know, to me, I wish they were able to make these halts dynamic based on the price of the stock but I, I think that that's a level that they're just not at yet of sort of changing what the thresholds are in real time you know what i mean so like it's based on the previous close so if you had the, that spot where a stock goes from you know two dollars to 350 and it crosses over that three dollar price now the halts you know should they change and yes they probably should but they're just this the system's not set up to adjust in real time for that so anyways, this is what we're stuck with. And um, and that's fine. I mean, we just, you know, this is the market that we're in, so it's not a big deal. But unfortunately for me, it made ASNS more or less untradeable at the open. Uh, nonetheless, I did get some trades on it um, pre-market. I'm up $3,511.05 today, which overall is a solid green day. I'm green on, let's see, one, two, three, four, five out of six stocks I traded. Accuracy, pretty solid here today. Um, you know, I was happy with this price action for the most part, but one thing that I'll say, uh, so ASNS was clean pre-market and then got choppy as the day went on because of the halts. Um, the second stock I trade, XTIA, this one was kind of insane. This went parabolic pre-market and then came all the way back down. So I rode the momentum, you know, as a momentum trader, I look for something that's moving. I jump on the momentum and that's exactly what I did. I took my biggest position on this at, I think it was two. Let's see. I'm trying to remember. Um, let me go back and look. So, okay. So it was at, um, so I got in, uh, 500 shares at $1.87. Um, I sold at a dollar two and then I added back at two fifty. Sold at 258, added back at 270. And this is where I added then at 285 and 290 for the break of three. And we got this nice squeeze here up to only about 305. But nonetheless, uh, you know, I made 1600 bucks on it trading with relatively small size because it was sort of thinly traded and I wasn't sure about it. But, you know, I got green on that. I was happy. And one of the things I said is let's trade the front side of the move right here and leave the backside alone. So once we get that MACD crossover, I'm like, nope, not interested in it. So I traded that on the front side. G-Wave, um, this one, choppy price action, um, not not super clean, but did give us a little bit of a move pre-market. I got in, um, let's see, we got this cup and handle formation right there. So I took a trade in this move, um, had a nasty rejection there. And then at the open, squeezed up a little bit more, but rejected again. So a couple of big jackknifes on that one. NVVE, lower price stock. I bought this at $1, ended up squeezing up um, to $1.10 right here and then pulled back and then came back up and went from $1 all the way to $1.60, $1.70. It's a pretty good move, but a little choppy. And in this move here, I felt like it was too extended and I was worried about getting caught in a halt going back down. Um, let's see, JWEL, uh, Jewel. So this one, I took a trade on it. Um, let's see, fifty-six dollars. Actually, this was a um, this was an after-hours or no, it was a trade going into the close. Um, that was right here. I just took a, a small trade on that. It was nothing, nothing really that exciting. Um, and then Yash Y O S H. This one um, bought small size, two hundred fifty shares on it pre-market. 
it started popping up and then it goes all the way down to 260. I don't even know what to think about this, but like some of these stocks are really wild and that's why I just break the ice with small size. And then if they work, I'll lean into it as I did on ATIA or XTIA. And if they don't, I just cut the loss quickly, get out and move on. And that that works pretty well most of the time. Occasionally, I'll still get a bigger loss, even with small size. But uh, the thing is, in this market, when things move, they can move so quickly that if I'm not quick to jump in, I can end up missing the whole thing. So I'm trying to jump in fairly quickly. I peaked today at about 4,500, gave back 1,000 off the top. And, you know, I didn't hit any max loss today or any triggers that I had to stop. But I just got to a point where I was like, well, I'm not really making money anymore. I did stick around a little longer today just because I had things I was doing on my computer and working on some videos for um, for the classes and for YouTube for later in the week or, or next week, I guess, probably. But uh, so I, I kind of kept an eye on charts and I was wondering what uh, ASNS was going to do after hours specifically once the halt levels went away. And you can see it curled up here, but then that news came out. So... We got the news of that um, exercising warrants. So $3 million in gross proceeds. This is, you know, it's not uncommon and they priced it $2.75 a share. So, um, you know, I, again, not surprising there. These companies usually do need to raise money. But you know what is interesting? Overall market, S&P 500, all-time highs. Wow. So overall market, blue sky, all-time highs. NVIDIA amazing super strong and now i'm really regretting that i didn't buy a little bit here when because this was the thing I, I i said this like oh i should you know take a position here i'm st i am holding some shares in my long-term account but i don't feel like that counts i i really wanted to be like you know getting a position here and using some maybe options but anyways missed it uh, if i see this a couple more times i'll get more confident in it but yeah they announced the news of the split and now it's up 20 percent uh so uh, nice to see, but again, I'm glad I'm I have a position in my long-term account. So at least I'm participating a little bit. But I was hoping that I'd be able to um, do something, you know, in, in my day trading account and just take a position or buy some options and, and let it ride. But anyways, I didn't I didn't want to mess up my accuracy doing something a little outside my wheelhouse. So instead of taking just a small bite, I just left it all. Didn't take anything. So. That's fine. But, you know, the, the big picture here is that uh, the market is looking really nice right now. So this is great to see. I, you know, I, I'm feeling I'm feeling pretty good about the market. And although we're still at the very beginning of June, you know, I'm, I'm building a nice cushion on the month up 14,000 on Monday. Uh, yesterday was a smaller green day, about a thousand thirty five hundred today. So, you know, my weekly goal has and my weekly average has been around 15,000 to 20,000. So I already hit that this week and now I just need to hold it together and see if I can add a little icing to the cake. And it's nice to have a, a nice start at the beginning of the month. Um, that doesn't always happen. So I'm going to be grateful for it here. And, you know, as always, live to trade another day. So I want to thank you guys um, who have uh, already hit the thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. If you haven't checked out our two-week trial, there'll be a link pinned to the top of the comments and in the description. So make sure you check that out. And I'll remind you, as always, that trading is risky. My results aren't typical. So manage your risk, take it slow. And Warrior Pro members, I'll see you live streaming bright and early tomorrow morning.